Hi, so this is going to be a very short, very quick, very focused tutorial on just one aspect of Eagle CAD, drawing flood fields and copper pores. So it's all the same thing. So let's take a typical uh, design like this one here, uh, very little copper on it. So therefore this would be a very poor etch candidate because it will take a very long time to get rid of all of this copper here. And as a result, underneath here, the track will start to etch away because the copper has been around it for such a long time, or the acid, sorry. So let's go and do a copper pour. So first things first, click on polygon and draw your polygon around the edge of the area that you want to select. Now, now I'm going right up to and beyond the edge of the board here, but as you'll see later, that's okay. So there's our polygon. First thing we do is we change the name of it. I'll click it there to put that track because it is a track like any other track really. Um, and I'm going to connect it to the ground plane. You don't have to, but I actually want it to be part of the ground plane in this case. Now you didn't see anything uh, interesting there, but that's because we haven't told it to view the um, resulting pore. You do that by clicking the rat's nest button, of course. There we go. That looks quite nice. And you'll notice that it's come away from the edge of the board as well. So that's fine. Now, if we right click on that polygon, the, the hidden one, and go properties, we can now play with some of the polygon options. So for example, orphans, I don't know if it's actually going to make a difference here, but if I enable it, go apply, no, it's okay. So an orphan would be where there's a perhaps a bit of copper that is iso electrically isolated from everything else. And you can decide whether you want that to be on your board or not. I'm selecting yes, because it maximizes the amount of copper that could be on your board. Now, the other thing here is you can see this funny little cross here and down here as well. And I can turn, that's a thermal relief. I can turn that off, click apply, and you see it goes solid. Um, that kind kind of looks good, and perhaps for some RF designs it might be, but uh, it will be a devil to solder because your iron, the heat, will suck away from your iron. So we're going to leave thermals on, and uh, the isolate here. This is uh, this is quite a nice one. This determines the the gap between the copper pour and uh, adjacent tracks. So if I put something a little bit more sensible in there, click apply, increases. So um, as the saying goes, uh, don't torture your um, board supply if you're getting this made somewhere. Um, don't give them very difficult um, uh, etches to do. I know this isn't terribly difficult, but um, just don't make their life difficult because um, uh, if their life is difficult, it's going to add eventually to uh, to your cost. So if a, a sensible gap here is um, is is OK, then another go ahead and put it in. I'm etching this by hand, so I'm going to put a, a pretty respectable gap in there. So that that does me two favors. Uh, first of all, it means that if I fail to etch all of this clear, uh, I'm still going to get a, um, uh, a separation between these two areas. And the other thing is that when I'm soldering here, I don't run the risk of a, 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 a splash of solder uh, shorting out. And I actually quite like that. I think that looks quite nice. I'm going to get OK with that. And there we are. That's our finished design. So, um, so that's it. If I close this uh, window down and open it back up again, like that, you'll see the effect has disappeared. It's still there, you just need to turn it on. Click the rat's nest to view it. And if you want to go back in and edit it, just click the rip up and click on that signal, double click again and you're back. There, that's it. Thank you very much for listening.